Hello and welcome to the episode 256 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today's show focuses on many live events, a birth, and further work on Glass Onion. On the 13th of September 1960, the Beatles, in their quintet lineup with Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing residency in town. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles had become a quartet, with Paul McCartney on bass. On this date, they performed another double gig at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. One for the lunchtime, their 50th performance at the Cavern, and one in the evening. Another lunchtime show at the Cavern in 1962. After the two-hour concert, the band, now featuring Ringo Starr on drums, had a brief trip to get to Chester for their fourth and final engagement at the River Park Ballroom. 1963. The Beatles played a public hall in Preston. After the show, Paul McCartney drove 25 miles, about 40 kilometers, to appear as one of the judges of the Imperial Miss 1963 contest in Nelson, part of an annual event sponsored by a local newspaper. And we get the final Beatles performance of the show in 1964. The Beatles played two shows at the Civic Center in Baltimore, Maryland, for their first North American tour, with a total of 28,000 people in attendance. The date was memorable because two female fans tried to get themselves delivered to the Civic Center in a large box labeled Beatles Fan Mail, but the security thwarted their plans. In 1965, Ringo Starr and his wife Maureen had a son, Zach. Zach Starkey went on to follow his father's footsteps and became a drummer, playing with the Who. Oasis and others. Let's move to 1967 and to the third day of filming for Magical Mystery Tour. In the morning, the Beatles, with some of the other actors, went to Watergate Bay. Here, the band was filmed looking through a telescope, a deleted scene, and Jesse Robbins and Ivor Cutler were filmed on the Trigorian beach for a romantic sequence that the BBC deemed unfit for the viewers and hence cut from its original screening of the film. Everyone returned to the Atlantic Hotel in Newquay, had lunch, and then the crew and the Beatles split into two groups for the afternoon work. John and George remained at the hotel, shooting a scene during which Nat Jackley chased young girls in bikini around the hotel swimming pool. Again, the scene was not used in the film. Then, John moved to Hollywell for further shooting, while George stayed at a hotel, taping a long radio interview with Miranda Ward for BBC Radio 1's Seen and Heard, a new series whose first show, featuring the first half of this interview, was broadcast between 6.32 and 7.29 pm on the 30th of September. The second half of the interview was broadcast on the 7th of October, during the second show of the program, same times. In the meantime, Paul and Ringo and most of the passengers were filmed on the coach along the road to Watergate Bay, in the sequence in which Ringo and Jesse Robbins have an argument. Then, the crew stopped in port to shoot a scene with George Clayton cycling with Paul McCartney on the beach. During the day, Spencer Davis of the Spencer Davis Group had met the Beatles at the Atlantic Hotel. He happened to be in the area with his family for a holiday. Let's move to 1968 and the third recording session focusing on Glass Onion. Today, between 8 pm and 1.45 am, a second drum track and a piano were overdubbed on the rhythm track. Finally, on the 13th of September 1969, John Lennon and the Plastic Ono Band performed at the Varsity Stadium of the University of Toronto for the first Toronto Rock and Roll Revival Festival. 
The Plastic Kono Band, featuring John Lennon on voice and guitar, Yoko Ono on voice, Eric Clapton on guitar, Klaus Vorman on bass and Alan White on drums, walked on stage in front of 27,000 people to perform their first show together. Two 20-minute sets of rock and roll standards and Lennon songs quickly rehearsed during the flight from London to Toronto on the previous night. The first set consisted of blues suede shoes, Money, That's What I Want, Dizzy Miss Lizzy, Your Blues, Cold Turkey, performed for the first time in front of an audience, and Give Peace a Chance. The last song was announced by John saying, this is what we came for, really, linking the entire concert to the Lennon's Peace campaign. After the last song, Yoko took over the microphone and performed Don't Worry Kyoko, Mom's only looking for her hand in the snow, and a 13-minute piece called John John, Let's Hope for Peace. Neither of the two pieces found the audience extremely welcoming, and, like it had happened on the 2nd of March concert in Cambridge, the band left in a wall of feedback coming from their amplifiers. The performance was recorded and filmed. The LP, Live Piece in Toronto 1969, was issued in time for the Christmas market, featuring the rock tunes on side 1 and Yoko's performance on side 2. The video performance, instead, was released in 1971 as Sweet Toronto and featured the song each from Bo Diddley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Chuck Berry and Little Richard, plus the entire set of the Plastic Ono Band. This concludes today's episode. As usual, you can do worse than visiting www.simonmas.com support to see all the things you can do to help me to improve the output and the quality of my content for you and to grow our little community. Thank you for any help you feel like giving. Join me tomorrow for a trip to India. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.